On today's episode, we're answering the question, no, we're not because I'm on the wrong damn outline. Yeah, totally. And I think, you know, something that I often talk about is um, self-awareness as being your kind of productivity superpower, because until you know yourself and how you work and, um, you know, what does and doesn't work for your own energy levels and the peaks and troughs as you move through your day, because again, that's different for all of us. Until you start paying attention to that and noticing that, you're always going to be butting up against things that are not working for you. Because once you can hone in, you know, something as simple as there are a million and one ways of managing a to-do list. So, you know, a really simple way to start honing down and honing in on something that's actually going to work for you is to think, do I naturally reach for a pen and paper or do I grab my phone or my laptop if I want to write something down that I need to remember? And even just asking yourself that really simple question about what you do naturally is a really great starting point so that you can build you know, a way of working that's actually going to suit you rather than we all feel like we have to be doing everything electronically because all of these apps are out there. I know I work better with a pen and paper, so that's what I do. Um, but again, that's different for everyone. So yeah, self-awareness is absolutely crucial. I'm, Alison and I both have big notepads on our desks and we communicate with each other often. So we're always scribbling notes. Oh, let me get that on the notepad. And we've tried a bunch of other systems and I know my clients have tried a bunch of systems what do we, you know, what is the thing that actually works? Because I feel like people go from one tip to the next. Oh, you have to try Asana. No, it's going to be Monday. No, it has to be, you know, this thing or that thing, or you have to use Slack. What is the, and you said we have to know ourselves, but does knowing ourselves mean we have to try out all these things to see what fits? Is it like trying on a bunch of clothes? Um, that's a really great question. And it, you know, I think there is an element of trial and error involved, but there are so many of those systems out there that if you were to try and try them all, you'd be there forever, you know? So I think it's just being really clear on what you need the thing to do. So if you're collaborating with someone, for instance, using something with an electronic component that is going to allow you to share stuff more easily if you're working remotely in collaboration with someone is perhaps the way to go. And quite often, to be completely honest with my clients, it comes down to which one they like the look of best. You know, they might just have a little look at the interface and go, oh, God, that makes me feel a bit sick. I can't even look at that. And there's, an, you know, there are others that look really pretty. A lot of my clients love Trello because it's, it's you know, a lot more visual and the board, I, I can't get on with it. I, know I can't even stand Trello. No, I can't even work in Trello. It drives me nuts. So, yeah, yeah. I get you. I'm more of a list yeah. person. Yeah, totally. I'm the same. Um, so, no, you don't need to try them all. Just get really clear on what you need the thing to do you know, what it is that you're trying to get from it. And then I would just say, pick one, give it, give it a chance to work and see how you go and see what you can learn from it. And if it's working good enough, then great. You know, what about when the thing that works for you, the thing that you naturally reach for, I was thinking about this when you said, what do you naturally reach for? And I usually reach for a a pad of paper because like Jenny said, now if I'm out, I actually will send myself an email so that it pops up if I don't have paper. But what if like that just doesn't work? Like it doesn't have a system behind it. It doesn't fit into a process. It requires manual touching all the time and you can't actually then grow so then it becomes where your to-do list or whatever is, is actually the point of overwhelm for you. What, what then? Yeah, that's a really, really great point. Cause I think a lot of people do exactly that. They've got a system that's maybe working for them. And then all of a sudden they find themselves in a situation where they don't have access to that system. They try something else and you end up completely overwhelmed. And you know, my, what that used to look like for me when I was in my job before I started doing what I do now Um, Every time someone would appear in my office door, which was all the blooming time, um, they would ask me to do something. I would just grab a a scrap of paper, scribble on it, put it on my desk. And then five minutes later, something would be on top of it. And I'd have post-it notes stuck everywhere. And that was exactly as you were saying, causing my overwhelm. So actually, like you say, the overwhelm wasn't necessarily about the stuff I needed to do. It was about actually not having a really clear overview of what it was that I needed to do. And that was the overwhelm. That was the fi- constant fear that I was gonna forget something, um, that I was gonna trip up in some way. 
So, you know, what, what I did in that case was got really serious about creating a system for myself. And what I did at that time was discover bullet journaling, which again, you know, I'm not going to preach that that is the solution because we're all very different. But for me, I took what I liked of that system and I evolved it to work for me. You know, there was a lot of it that wasn't working for me. I, if you Google bullet journals, if you've never seen them before, you will be faced with loads of beautiful calligraphy and people designing them to be this work of art, which can be really great if that floats your boat. But actually, that's not, in my opinion, what they're for. It's about somewhere to gather all of these to do's and gather everything that needs to happen so that you can then move into action and start getting stuff done. Um, and I love the system so much, I actually created a whole course um, based around setting up a system that's kind of my version of that. Because um, I just think consolidating everything in some way is the way is the way forward, whatever that way looks like for you. And the great thing about what I teach when I teach this stuff and you know the bullet journal method is that you can be really flexible with it and you can make it work for you. It does take experimentation with any system that you choose to use, you're never gonna get it right first time. Um, you need to try these things. Instead of waiting for it to be perfect before you start, you need to just get going with it and then make tweaks and adjustments as you go. Yeah. All right, what about, and I, I love the, the bullet journal thing and I wanna come back to that in a minute, but I'm kind of stuck on what, we were talking about before where Jenny and I collaborate a lot and, you know, I'm growing my team and our listeners will probably be growing their teams. What about when you're collaborating with someone either from a team perspective or as a partner and they operate differently? Is there a way to build in compromise or is it really just Jenny and I are big fans of open communication? Is it really just one of those situations? Yeah, I think it really is that it's just being really, um, again, the self-awareness comes in there because you, if you know what you need and how you work best, you could communicate that with someone else and they can do the same with you. And, you know, if we all move through life, assuming everybody thinks as we do, that's going to cause all kinds of problems. <laughs> so when we can understand and realize that we're not all the same and have got that flexibility and the, you know, the, the willingness and the capacity to, meet somebody where they are um, and finding a way of that working for both of you. And I think you can only really find that through open communication. I mean, I have somebody I collaborate with who's also been a client of mine who is very on the fly. She just will say she's going to do a workshop tomorrow and we'll just rock up and do it. And it'll be amazing. That is not me. <laughs> um, I need a lot of time. To I just got think hives thinking. Very yeah. <laughs> exactly. and I just got excited. <laughs> This is the but, personality you know, we, difference. <laughs> yeah, totally. And it, but it, that can be a really great dynamic, actually, I think, in terms of, you know, when people are seeing both of those things at play, because there's absolutely value in both. But it means that, you know, when I'm working with her, she knows she has to give me notice. If there's a launch going on that I'm involved in, she can't tell me the week before I need enough notice. And she does that really well. And similarly, I won't give her all the detail that I know is going to send her into a tailspin. Um, but yeah, it is that communication piece, really important. The communication piece. So, you know, we're, we're bringing this back over to Alison and I a little bit, just because yeah. we've, we've been working together on this podcast. Now we're going into, see, you know, it'll be season three in 2023 and working with somebody who has a different, like I'm bullet journals make me happy. Um, although I have had to adopt it because again, also the frill, you know, the frilly calligraphy stuff didn't really fit for me. And I want to talk more about your system. Do you mind sharing what your like some details about your system? How does that work? What is the what's the setup? And how people can start, you know, start to like we've talked about sort of the high level stuff. I really want to get into the nitty gritty of how we can create that productivity. So do you mind sharing a bit more about that? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, the to-do list stuff is now a very, very small part of what I do. So that course isn't even actually on my website at the moment. <laughs> if anyone wants to know more about it, do let me know. But I'm not actively promoting it at the moment. But, you know, where, where I really support people now. No, let me backtrack. Let me backtrack. So we've got the course, which is called Tame Your To-Do List. And what that allows people to do is to go, OK, 
I am going to pull together everything that is going on for me, not just in my business, but in my life as well, because those two things do not exist in separate vacuums. You know, what's going on in your life is going to impact on the energy you've got available for your business because you are one human being with 24 hours in a day um, and only, you know, a certain amount of energy that will get used up one way or another. So I think that's a mistake I often see people make is trying to pretend that their business and their the rest of their lives can exist separately from each other. Um, so the to-do list course I have encourages people to bring all of that together. And it's not, you know, it's thinking about, yes, what needs to be done, but also when does this need to be done? Because, you know, a traditional to-do list, you just write it all on a big old list and you think you've got to get it all done by tea time. And that's not very realistic. So what the course I teach in the bullet journal, all of that stuff does, I think is really powerful is it adds a when to the what. And it encourages you to capture all of those tasks so that you're seeing them when they become important. And you're not looking today at something you don't need to worry about for another three weeks, because that's just going to take up valuable headspace and mental energy. So that's what I really love about it. It's a, it's a really neat way of capturing everything that's important. And again, one of the very first things I really encourage people to do with this is to look at what's on their list and go, is this really important? Because quite often we're very good at putting things on the list, but we're not so good at taking things off. Um, you know, I once had someone go through the course um, who had had something on her list for three years that someone had asked her to do three years ago. It was a family thing, so it wasn't a work thing. It had never been mentioned again. She hadn't done it. And every time she looked at it, she felt terrible. So having permission to remove that from her list, honestly, that the lightness and the energy that that gave her was really astonishing to witness when I saw her on that on the call that we were having. So remembering it's okay to take things off the list, evaluating whether these things are still important and thinking about when they're going to happen as you're putting all this um, in place and consolidating everything is what's going to make the biggest difference in my opinion. Um, and then what I do more of now is actually help people beyond that into the kind of planning um, the planning piece in terms of, you know, how often are you actually sitting down, giving yourself the time and space to plan what you're going to do? I think quite often as business owners, particularly when we're, when we're overwhelmed, our, our tendency is to want to speed up, keep our heads down and just keep going. So I am all about, and this is where the alliteration is going to come in that Alison mentioned earlier. I am all about taking a purposeful pause for powerful planning. So that's very much what I'm preaching <laughs> these days. Yeah. <laughs> My nostrils are flaring. I know. Stop. 